Okay, this is Spencer, the Tampa Bay Wallpaper Installer, and I'm going to show you a small job. It's a commercial job from the beginning to the end, including the setup. I'm gonna show you what's on my tool belt. I wanna show you what I bring to the job so that if you try this at home, you have sufficient resources to do the job, not only uh, sufficiently, competently, but also very well. For example, if you run out of blades, sharp blades, as a homeowner, you might think, oh, what the heck, I'll just cut it with a dull blade. Well, you'll have to suffer the consequences for having done that for the time that the wallpaper is up. Because on every cut, ideally, depending on the thickness of the paper, you want a new blade. And I, uh, I simply use the, the breakaway blades for those types of cuts at the top and on the bottom and in corners, uh, depending on the paper. Now, if you're going to cut a, uh, a vertical cut, you would you'd use a single edge for the most part. But anyway, the blades, for example, if you were to say, well, I don't have enough, I'm underprepared, what the heck? No. So you would have as many blades as you see there. See all of those blades? Okay, so what do I have on my tool belt? Well, you have a roller. Let me get this thing out of the way. This is not, uh, I, I don't have somebody here with me yet. I will shortly. This is a seam roller, okay? This is just like a roller, roller blade, the wheel. It's flat. If you have to check it, if it gets nicked, throw it out. If it has a protrusion, meaning a little nick in it and a little piece of it is sticking up, take a piece of sandpaper. If you need to use the tool and you're not, you don't have access to another one, sand that spur off because that will, as much as you roll it, it will penetrate your wallpaper every inch or two. Think about it. It's not going to penetrate it, but it will put a dimple in it and essentially penetrate it where you'll be able to see it. Okay, so that's one of the tools. Tape measure. You definitely want to have a tape measure on your person, even though you may not find that you're using it. You want a tape measure. Okay, um, this is one of about 10. You don't want to be on a ladder having to put a new blade in. You want to drop this to the ground after you secure the blade and drop it. And then grab your next one. Okay? These are plastic smoothers. I have about, I'm going to say about 50 of them. You drop these on the ladder, they fall to the ground. You grab another one from your pocket. You don't get one. You get many. And these things get, they get nicked. Okay, if you look closely, see the see in the middle there that that protrusion. So it's protruding up from the surface. If I were to use that on a delicate surface wallpaper, guess what? I'm going to scratch my customer's wallpaper. Maybe not scratch the surface, but definitely cause a a void in the smoothness of the surface. So because this is a protrusion, it's going to protrude or, uh, what's the word? It's going to cause a void in the, in, the, in the flatness of the surface. So I need to look at my tools before I start. If I see any protrusions, I take sandpaper and I, 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 I get rid of them. I make them smooth. You can do it with sandpaper. Eventually, these go in the garbage. Uh, all right? This, this is one of many scrapers that you want on a job because sometimes there are little uh, clinkers on the wall. And um, what you might see is little things sticking up. Let's find one here. I'm gonna find one for you, okay. You see this? See that? Do you wanna hire a professional and see that he left them on the wall? No, they come off like this, look. See that? I don't know if you saw it. So I just go like that. You get them off. So you need your scraper. You need your seam roller. And if you're a professional, you have more than one seam roller because everything you have falls out of your hand when you're on a ladder. For some reason, the law of ladders is that it falls when you're on the ladder and it's always when you're up eight feet to 10 feet in the air, okay? Um, so, just to prove my point. Here's my other seam roller, okay? <clears throat> now, I have this. 
It's a little one, $3 at Harbor Freight. Why? Well, um, when you start the job, if you see a, a high on the wall, meaning a screw sticking up or a nail, for nothing else would you use this. It's for nails and screws. You go like this, you tap it down. Now, how does the professional avoid penetrating the surface? Well, you take a flat, hard object. Picture a four by four piece of wood. Something you might put under the leg of a chair on a carpet temporarily so it doesn't uh, make that, that, uh, that hard penetration into your carpet that's hard to get out. You want to distribute the weight of something. It's, it's, the purpose is to distribute the impact of the hammer hitting the surface. So if I were to hit this wall here, I would cause a dimple in the wall. But to avoid that, if I have something raised up on the wall, like a nail that wasn't sufficiently nailed down, or a screw that wasn't sufficiently uh, submerged underneath the, the, in the sheetrock, well, then I need this. Otherwise, your customer's going to see it, and then you have an unprofessional installation. So, you take a hard object that you have handy. I'm going to use for an example a piece of hard metal. See that? Now, I'm not going to bang my brand new 20 inch trowel, but picture at the top of this, right over the bulge, the bulging nail. I bang on the metal to distribute the impact of the, of the, of the trauma of the hammer hitting the surface. And instead of making a dimple in the surface, I may dimple the, the, the wood or the metal, but I don't dimple the substrate, which is the wall, under which the wallpaper will hang. And so I have a nice flat surface, okay? You get the idea. I'm not going to use this, but that's as an example. I would use my, my little piece of wood that I get on a job, a piece of scrap, okay? What else do I have? Scissors. When you're cutting corners, you'll find that you need to cut a little piece here, a little piece there. And if you use one of these, it'll cut the whole piece off from the paper. So you just want to go up to the edge like this, like that. Okay, now, black magic marker. Why do I have that? I'm not gonna tell you. You don't wanna know. You don't tell people everything. If you're interested, put a comment, maybe I'll answer it. Look at this. Oh, okay, the batteries are in my pocket, I just pulled this out. This is a light that you wanna have for dark spaces and corners where your lamp just won't get when you, when you're, uh, when you have your lamp going or it, there's insufficient lighting. You want to see exactly what you're looking at? You take out your little light. This is a very bright LED bulb, okay? Unfortunately, the manufacturer did not take into account the thing coming off. I, so this, this happens a lot. The end of it comes off. It doesn't lock in, it should twist on, it doesn't. It just notches in a quarter turn and it always comes off. So anyway, what else do I have? A nail punch, okay? Basic tool, costs about a dollar from Harbor Freight. Sometimes you have these finishing nails uh, over which you have to hang your wallpaper and they just, the head of it is sticking out. Now remember the idea with the hammer and the nail and the dimple, making the dimple? You wanna push it in with this. This is what you wanna push it in with. This is what it's for, it's for a finishing nail to, to submerge the surface of the nail underneath the sheetrock so it doesn't penetrate your wallpaper when you're hanging it. If you should hang wallpaper over a finishing nail, you will have a nice hole in your wallpaper. All right. Uh, it's about it for now. Now the setup of the job. Let's take a look at the tools. So my basic setup, basically in wallpaper, you have a ladder, you have a roller for your, for your application of the adhesion, uh, the adhesive. Um, you, you may need a scaffold, but you certainly have a ladder. You have your, your blades, you have your roller for the, for the glue. On jobs where there were major repairs, you wanted this. This is a scraper. Sometimes you have to scrape off some hideous um, uh, 
protrusion. I call them protrusions because they're protruding from the wall. They're, they're raised surfaces. So if you should get like some, some finisher didn't, he forgot to, to sand the very bottom of his plaster. If I want to take it off quick, just rip, rip it right down. You know, if you have a very thick wallpaper and you should want to get a, uh, a surface down flat, this is the quickest way to do it. And, uh, you know, you, you got to know what you're doing because this is a rip. This rips it off. And then you sand it. You're always going to finish it. That's not the finishing tool, but you're going to finish it. But look at, this is one of the main things I got here. Now, I already showed them to you. This is one, two, three, four boxes of breakaway blades. You can't play games. You want to spend the money to do the job right, okay? This is my tripod for my videos. You want to have a whole bunch of clean white rags, okay? And so you want to have... Now, sometimes on these jobs, you don't have access to running water. You have to find out when you're doing the job. Hey, do I have access to running water? In fact, if you have to travel, like, you know, 25 yards, and I was on a job recently where I had to travel the length of a football field to get to running water, guess what? You know, you got to raise the price a little bit for the time that it takes to... Uh, to do that, okay? Um, so you wanna make sure that you have running water and you wanna have more than enough clean white rags. If they are not white, I guarantee you the color from your cloths will be on the wallpaper after you wipe it down, okay? Um, basic wallpaper toolbox is this, okay? See this? level when you're up above cabinets or you use your laser level which I'll show you in a moment I showed I showed it to you on another job these are basic tools all right one of the most important tools in wallpaper hanging is this why I don't think I want to tell you um, it's the same reason why you have a black magic marker Sometimes on, on wallpaper, the color comes off, okay? Now, sometimes the printer just doesn't do the job, but it's in an area where it's at the bottom or in a corner and you just take... Listen, a good wallpaper hanger has to be able to... Some other contract, electrician comes by, scrapes the paper, takes a nick out of the paper that is literally smaller than a quarter size of a, an American dime. Take your, your color, you, you put a little candle under it, make the, the tip of the, the crayon moist. Done. Okay? Uh, I, don't, I don't like these. I don't, <clears throat> I don't use them. I, th I don't like that they, they're, uh, they're abrasive. I don't like that. I want it smooth, but I got it. Can't have enough of these things, okay? When I go into the store and there's 20, guess what, I get 20 of them. Because when they get nicks in them, you gotta drop them and go to the next one. It's like, you know, you, uh, reload, you know? You, you need it fast, you gotta do it right. Now, one of the last tools I'm gonna show you is this. This tool goes at the bottom of the wallpaper or at the top. Watch. See that? So picture the wallpaper being up. This goes at the bottom. And then on this side, on the very bottom there, you cut at the very bottom against that metal. And you have a perfectly sharp edge of your paper. Okay? That's all I want to show you for now. And uh, this is Spencer, the Tampa Bay Paper Installer, coming to you from Tampa. Oh, click on like, please. If you made it to the end of this video, you probably liked it. So please do me the favor now of clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Thank you.